Welcome to Chuck Build. Today we're talking about this Brother ADS-1200 scanner that I purchased for use with Paperless NGX. I messed up when I purchased this scanner. I thought it was the ADS-1200W, but I got carried away for the price of $30, which is a very steep discount because it was four parts um, slash missing parts. And all that it was missing was a power cord that I purchased for a few bucks. And I'm able to still connect a USB port or USB drive to the scanner and scan straight to the USB. And I found a write-up on GitHub about how to use a Raspberry Pi Zero W that I actually had laying around. I thought it was broken, but it still works. And using this as a USB OTG to act as a flash drive and this scanner writes to the flash drive and then the Raspberry Pi can copy that file off to my Unraid server. All you'll need for this today is obviously one of these brother scanners, a Raspberry Pi Zero W, a micro USB cable, micro SD card, and a micro SD card reader, and a PC to do all this. Um, to demonstrate how this works and how I'm digitizing my filing cabinet here is you would take your document and put it into the scanner, hit the button, It'll scan it straight to the Raspberry Pi, and then once per minute, the Raspberry Pi will run a cron job to copy that file over to my server. While we're waiting for that to show up on the server, I have a full write-up on my website, chuck-builds.com, with all the codes and stuff we're gonna execute. So if you're gonna do this, feel free to check it out here. And when we come over to paperless, we can see that the document was just added. We can open it up and it popped right in to enable us to continue our workflow and assign a name, tags, and all the info we need to for this document. Paperless NGX has been super cool so far, and I'm looking forward to using it more now that I've got this scanner set up. If you wanna install this just like I did, let's hop in. We're leaning on some pros here from the GitHub for Paperless NGX, which was uh, Marvo 2011 and this German guy, Mygraft. Um, for their help. I mean, I really couldn't have done this without them. I don't want anybody to think this is my idea. I just had a hard time doing it. I'm gonna make a video to walk you through it on the off chance you happen to have an ADS-1200 and you happen to have a Raspberry Pi Zero W. If you don't have those, do not go buy this. Go on eBay and buy the version with a W. I saw the ADS-1500Ws for around 30 bucks. Um, they're a little dirty, but it's not so bad. And I would not recommend paying $400 for it. The first step will be inserting our micro SD card to our reader and then plugging that in to our computer. And then you'll need to download the Raspberry Pi imager that I have a link for here, but I'll just get it out of my files. And then we'll choose our Raspberry Pi Zero. We'll choose the light operating system. So we'll go to other light 32 bit, and then we'll choose our storage device. For me, it's this USB and we'll click next. We wanna edit these settings. We wanna make sure that we have a name. We also wanna make sure that we have enabled SSH and then you wanna set a password and set your Wi-Fi. So I've got all of this set up for me and we'll click yes and we'll write that to the micro SD card now. So once it finishes, it'll pop up with the micro USB and we'll let it finalize and officially tell us it's done. And then we'll go plug it into the Raspberry Pi Zero W and plug it in to the scanner so it'll turn on. Um, at this time, make sure that you plug it into the data USB port and not the power USB port. The power one has no data lines and will not work for our purposes. To demonstrate the correct USB port, it's the second one. And you'll just plug it in with the micro SD card attached. Give it a few minutes and it'll pop up on your Wi-Fi network for the next step. So once the Raspberry Pi starts up, we're gonna use PuTTY to connect to it. I like PuTTY, you can really use anything to SSH into it. There's a link on the guide. And if you don't know the IP address of your new Raspberry Pi setup, I come down to my DHCP leases and here we can see ScanPi, the name of it, and the IP address. So we'll take that IP address, we'll launch PuTTY, and we'll open it. And we need to know the uh, name and password. So ScanPy. So I'm gonna put these side by side for following along the instructions. Um, again, make sure that you're using the USB port and not the power port on the Raspberry Pi, um, or this will seem like it's not working. 
I've got each of the commands that we're gonna execute separated into the lines that will execute them. So each of these will press enter after, and then this one will do a whole big block. Um, but it should be pretty automatic for us to go through and just copy, paste, enter. And these are setting up the USB OTG settings. And it's gonna be called USB disk. Um, this last command takes a second to finish. You always want to make sure that you get the command to finish running. It'll say scanpy at scanpy with the dollar sign. Um, we don't want to wait and press it now because it's still running the previous command. Okay, and it just finished um, two gigs at 17 megabytes per second. They're it's a Raspberry Pi Zero. <laughs> it's pretty slow. So we'll take this next big command, which is all at once, don't separate it into lines. Paste and enter. It'll read back to us that we have a new device, USB disk image one, and it's two gigs big and it's FAT32 type. And then we can get it to connect by setting it as a disk. And I had a set, I had a note to reboot right here. I'm gonna see if we can ignore that. And we'll try this next command. And this will make it act like it's connected to your PC. It's like inserting a flash drive, except it's currently attached to the scanner, so it doesn't really do anything. But if you had it connected to your PC, it should pop up saying disk found um, and along those lines. We'll have to restart it later, so I'm just following along and going down to the next step for setting up SMB, which is how we'll transfer the files from the machine to my server. And we need to install something called Poplar Utils first. So we'll do this sudo apt install, press Y, then enter to confirm that we want to install that. So once that's done, um, we're going to do sudo nano fstab, and this is going to make a connection when it starts. And we want to make sure we're on the last line of this file. And you're going to copy over this string, and you just want to make sure that the IP address and folders are what you're expecting. Leave mount scan. This is what's going to be locally read on that Pi, but then that path that we're tying it to for me is the IP address locally, my data folder, consume folder, and then paperless import. Um, this can be whatever you want, this front, front text here. Uh, just make sure that it points to your paperless ngx consume because all it's going to do is drop a folder in there and paperless will do the rest we'll hit Control x to exit y to save enter to save the name and then we'll do a similar exercise with the smb credentials and this is going to be just how it logs in so i'm going to copy and paste it and you'll have to have made this user on your server to access that file um, with SMB shares, you need to have that user set up to be secure. Uh, username, and then mine is ScanPy, and then password, and I will paste my password, and then I'll do the save, but I'm gonna just cut the video. And then it's saved. And we're now gonna set up a Wi-Fi reconnect to make sure that we're always connected to our Wi-Fi network. Um, this thing may be turning on and off as our scanner turns on and off. You still make sure that it's there and it's it's working. I haven't really noticed this being a problem, but Marvo2011, who wrote these scripts, seemed to think it was important. So I'm just going to keep using his. And thank you for that, Marvo, because <laughs> I would have never come up with this on my own. Save this. Make it executable. And then now is the part that gave me so much trouble is automating the PDF transfer from the SD card to the paperless inbox. We're gonna create a script called copy PDF to inbox with nano. And I'm just gonna take this whole block of text and paste it over. There's a cleaner version of this on the original post from Marvo. I couldn't get it to work reliably. I could manually call it, but something about mounting and unmounting, um, turning it on and off, it wouldn't stay working. And so I had ChatGPT help me make this version that has a few more log out um, readouts. So you can kind of tell what's going on and it'll tell you when there's an error and it'll tell you when it's successful. And if there is an error, it'll tell you what it is. Um, that's really helpful for me to diagnose and troubleshoot this. So I would recommend 
For now, using this longer version, I have the original version from Marvo just below it, but for now, I'm gonna be using this longer version that has log files so that we know if something goes wrong. Again, I've been having a lot of issues with this for like the last year, and I'm just now getting it to work reliably. Um, I don't want you to get in a situation where it doesn't work and I can't help you, so these log files will be very helpful for us to figure out together how to get this to work for you. Once that's in there, we'll exit, save, and then save the name. We need to remember to make it executable. So we'll paste this to make it an executable. And then we're gonna do a cron job. I originally had this as cron tab dash E and it wasn't running reliably. So I've changed it since then to sudo. It'll run as the sudo user. Um, so once you paste that, we'll have to press one to open it in nano. I don't do vim because I'm not crazy. And then we'll go down to the bottom of the file and I'm just gonna copy this over. Briefly what this does, at reboot, it's going to mount the USB drive, the USB drive, the one that we created in the previous commands, the USB OTG, and that will be mounted as a flash drive to the printer. This next one is the Wi-Fi reconnect. It runs that script every minute. It makes sure that you are connected, and if you're not, it tries to reconnect. The next one is gonna run the script to copy the file to the paperless inbox every minute. Um, if there's a PDF, move it over to the mount scan folder, which is tied to the paperless folder. It's like a path mapping. The folder is the same on two different machines. It has the same name though. Paperless will take it, delete it, and process it. Press Control X to exit, Y to save, enter to save again. And then we need to do this system CTL daemon reload because we messed with the cron and then that requires us to paste the password for our user, scanpy, authenticates and it'll complete. And finally, we will reboot once our scanpy comes back. So that's a quick run through of all of these commands. It's not that hard to copy and paste it, but boy, is it difficult to troubleshoot this. It's really outside of my comfort zone with these commands and bash scripts. But thankfully, we're leaning on some pros here from the GitHub for Paperless NGX, which was uh, Marvo 2011 and this German guy, Mygraft. Um, for their help. I mean, I really couldn't have done this without them. I don't want anybody to think this is my idea. I just had a hard time doing it. I'm gonna make a video to walk you through it on the off chance you happen to have an ADS 1200 and you happen to have a Raspberry Pi Zero W. If you don't have those, do not go buy this. Go on eBay and buy the version with a W. I saw the ADS 1500Ws for around 30 bucks. Um, they're a little dirty, but it's not so bad. And I would not recommend paying $400 for it. Welcome to Chuck Builds. In this video, I'm gonna go over using a Brother ADS 1200 scanner and a Raspberry Pi Zero W to make that scanner wireless and use it for paperless NGX. I started this project off on accident. When I first started using paperless NGX, I wanted to improve my scanning workflow and I looked at their list of recommended scanners and noticed the ADS 1200W. And when I clicked on it, it took me to the Brother website and it's left off the W. And so I did a little bit of research here after translating it to English and reading up on all the stats. And I went to eBay and searched for it and I found one for $30, which is a steep discount on the MSRP. But in that excitement of seeing the cost that it was just missing a power cable, I neglected to notice the missing W. And so when I got home and I set it up, it worked great on my computer. All it needed was a power cord. When I was researching this scanner some more on the paperless NGX GitHub, I found a post by Marvo2011 where he outlines the steps with a form post and the steps needed to get this to work with a Raspberry Pi Zero W using the USB OTG mode. Now, the forum post that he references is in German, and this is just to get the OTG to work, 
which actually worked pretty good just following these instructions outright. But where I had more trouble was using the scripts that Marvo had provided. And so with a little bit of chat GPT, I was able to get it all ironed out on my website. I've shared all of the scripts that I'm using, which is mostly from that German form and then a few changes to Marvo's main script. But we'll go ahead and get started on setting this up. 